Hello, and welcome to another numbers edition of Apple a Day. In this episode, I'm continuing my series on date and time functions in Apple numbers. Today, this is a very short one. I'm covering EO month, which returns the last date of a specified month. So let's get to it. I already have a blank numbers document open and a cell selected. So I'm just gonna type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. I'll type in EO month and press tab or return. And you can see that this function takes two parameters, the start date and the month offset. So in the start date parameter, of course, I can type in a month, but I'm gonna use the today function to get today's date. So I'm gonna type in the word today and press return. And the today function does not take any parameters. It just simply returns today's date. So if I press the tab key, I move over to the next parameter, which is the month offset. This parameter takes a numeric value, which lets you add or subtract months to the specified date. So if I type in zero, it would just be the current month. One would be the next month and minus one would be the previous. I'm gonna leave it at zero and press return. The date shows me September 30th, which is the last day of the current month. All right, so it works. It's doing what it's supposed to do. But when would you use something like this? It could be useful for getting date ranges, but it could also be used to find out how many days are left in a month. So in a new cell, I'm gonna type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor again. And I'm gonna use the date diff function, which I've covered in a previous tutorial. Date diff lets you determine the difference between two dates, and you can specify if you want that difference to be in days, months, years, etc. So we wanna see the difference between the current date and the last day of the month to know how many days are left in the month. So I'm gonna type in date diff and return. And we have the start date, which is gonna be today's date. So I'll type in today again and return and press tab to go to the next parameter, which is the end date. And in end date, I'm gonna type in EO month and press return. And EO month also takes a start date. So we're gonna type in today again because we wanna to use today's date in order to calculate the last day of this month. So I'll type in today and press return and tab over to the next parameter, which is the month offset. And because we're interested in the current month, I'm gonna leave that at zero, just like we did before. And rather than tabbing over to calc method, calc method is a parameter for date diff. I want that to be number of days. So if I click on the drop down arrow, I'm gonna select D for days. So here we have an example of using embedded functions within numbers. It can be quite powerful yet complicated. So if I press return, it shows me 27. Now today is September 3rd. So three plus 27 is 30. So that's telling me we have 27 days left in the month of September. So that can be useful. Now what's great is because I use the today function and I have another tutorial that covers the today and the now functions, these are dynamic. So if I were to save this numbers document and open it back up tomorrow, that would change from 27 to 26. So whatever formula uses the today function, it gets updated every time that date changes. Now, of course, you don't have to use the today function. You can type in an absolute date or you can use values from other cells to specify the start date and month offset. I demonstrated that in my last tutorial, which covered the eDate function. So that's pretty much it for EO month, a very simple but useful function in Apple numbers. Thanks again for watching. My name is John Martins. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple a Day.